Welcome to the program, everyone. This is Politics Tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Olajumoke Olatunji, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, appeals to Nigerians not to embark on nationwide protest amid economic crisis. Tonight we continue our focus on the planned nationwide protest and other matters. And I will be speaking with Umar Aminu Kago, a lawyer and also a political affairs analyst. Uh, Comrade Daniel Onja, public affairs analyst and former president, National Association of Nigerian Students, NAS, will also be joining us for that uh, conversation. Please stay with us, everyone. Welcome to the program. Welcome back and thank you very much for staying with us. Now let's begin with some developments in the policy. The federal government has again appealed to Nigerians to shun the planned protests scheduled for tomorrow in the interest of peace in the country. Secretary to the government of the Federation, George Akume, and some key ministers held a press conference on government's efforts to make life better for Nigerians. The SGF says the government recognizes the people's freedom to protest, but strongly advises against vandalism and violence. He also mentioned that Nigerians must remain vigilant and avoid vandalism or violence. The ongoing economic hardships, and they are improving in any way. We we'll debate very soon, and we shall all enjoy endless prosperity. We therefore appeal to Nigerians of whatever persuasion, belief, demography, gender, and status to shun cause for protests against hunger by prioritizing peace and progress. For the avoidance of doubts, the government of President Bolamed Chinumuji CFR recognizes the right to peaceful protest, but circumspection and vigilance should be a watchword. The provision of the Nigerian Students' Loan Scheme has a provision to cover 2 million students. Already, disbursements have started, and as at last week, Nell Fund has received application in excess of 120,000, and is also uh, ongoing. Now, the message of Mr. President is that there is no one, no child that has the requisite qualification and that has the desire to go to school that will be left out simply because his parent or guardian is unable to pay for his fees. Vice President Kashim Shatima has solicited the support of Nigerians for the actualization of the programs and policies of President Bola Tinubu's administration, insisting that the president means well for all Nigerians. According to him, contrary to speculations in some quarters, President Tinubu is neither anti North not anti-Islam. And the president has reflected this in appointments to key positions in federal government's ministries, departments, and agencies. The VP said this when he received representatives of media pr practitioners from the northern part of the country on a course of visit at the presidential villa, Abuja. On the planned nationwide protest, Senator Shatima acknowledged the rights of citizens to protest, but pointed out that it has its own demerits that are not pleasant. Bola Ahmed Tinubu is neither anti-North nor anti-Islam. But this is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious nation. And we have to see to the coloration of all tendencies. He loves the North. He is working for the North. One of the pet programs of this government is the Badagri Lagos, Badagri Sokoto Highway, that has 64 dams along the pathway. And we are going to develop all those 64 dams. Who created the Ministry of Livestock Development? And who are going to be the net beneficiaries of this Ministry of Livestock Development? We have machines for producing net houses in Borno. If we can get the machine working, we can mass produce net houses that can bring down the ambient temperature by two degrees, and we can empower our women. 
Let's take a short break and when we return, it will be time to discuss the planned nationwide protest and other matters. And tonight I will be speaking with Umar Aminu Kago, is a lawyer and also a political affairs analyst, and also Comrade Daniel Onja, public affairs analyst and former president, National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS. Stay with us, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. A few more hours to go, and Nigerians are still largely divided over the choice of demonstrations to register their displeasure with the government. Regional leaders from the north and south have joined others in backing out of the proposed demonstrations. They hinge their non-participation on the possibility of the protests turning violent. Many groups in the state, including the Apex Northern Social Cultural Group, uh, Arawa Consultative Forum, and youth groups like the National Leadership of the National Association of Nigerian Students, NAS, say it has pulled out of the planned nationwide protests across the country, citing the fear that it could lead to violence. The federal government has continued to plead with Nigerians not to proceed with a nationwide protest, slated for Wednesday, August 1st. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, made the plea at a World Press Conference in Abuja, attended by key federal government functionaries. Akume said that protest was not the solution to the challenges which the administration was working tirelessly to solve. Nigerians of whatever persuasion believe demography, gender and status to show cause for protests against hunger by prioritizing peace our progress. For avoidance of doubts, the government of President Bolame Chinubuji CFR recognizes the right to peaceful protest, but circumspection and vigilance should be our watchword. What we need as a nation is to allow these economic reforms and various interventions to mature through the gestation period into reality and Nigeria will never be the same again. Nigeria will never regress again. Nigeria will be put on a solid economic platform for this and future generations and history will be kind to this generation for having the resilience. I guess tonight, uh, Umar Aminu Kalgo is a lawyer and also a political affairs analyst, uh, joined by Comrade Daniel Onja, public affairs analyst and former president, National Association of Nigerian Students. Gentlemen, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. Welcome to Politics Tonight. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, Comrade, good evening to you. Good evening. Right. So, so let me start with you, Comrade Onje. Nigerians are divided uh, on this planned protest, which has caused a uh, panic mood in the country. But from your own perspective, do you agree with those who are very convinced that this planned protest is an ambush? Uh, those who say uh, this protest is a plot to a bigger plot. I mean, also corroborated by a statement uh, by ACF National Publicity Secretary, and that's Professor T.A. Mohamed Baba, who said it was unthinkable that the millions of Nigerians that feed from mega daily earnings can sustain a shutdown of up to 10 days? Well, um, to start with, we will need to appreciate the fact that both those who are pro and uh, anti the protest agree on one thing, that indeed there is hardship in the land, there is hunger uh, on the scale that had never been witnessed by Nigerians. And it is indeed very concerning. So uh, the plan protest over the hardship is explicable. And citizens have the right to go out there and protest. I think where some of us differ is the approach of the protest because there are two kinds of protest known the the non-violent protest and the violent protest and from verdicts of history only one of the 
types of protests has shown or have been proven to yield pos positive results in societies, which is the non-violent protest that was initiated by Mahatma Gandhi of India and further reinforced by Martin Luther King during the civil rights movement uh, in America. Uh, but the, the violent protests also have been known to throw nations and countries into uh, uh, social, political, and economic tumor that, you know, um, end up uh, 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 causing uh, setback, major one for that matter, for countries. So that is where we are concerned. We are not saying, my school of, of thought, because of course, um, less I'm misunderstood, I'm a former president of the National Association of Nigerian Students, of course, for those who know my record in this country. I am a product of protest, and I believe that through protest, we are able to effect uh, institutional and systemic changes in a society. So I believe in it so much. I'm an ardent believer of protest. But where the leadership of the, uh, or the protagonists or proponents of the protest are not known to people, it becomes very, very concerning. That is why people are thinking, just like you mentioned, that there's a bigger picture to what is being proposed. The leadership of this uh, protest should step forward and make bold their demands. The essence of embarking on protest is to draw public attention or global attention to uh, a certain issue or a set of issues so that redress can be sought. If that be the case, then this planned protest has achieved its aim even before uh, uh, comrade. Uh, embarking on it. Because mm -hmm. already the attention of the government right. had been drawn. The international right. community comrade, also, uh, 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 the attention had been drawn to this hold. protest. Uh, comrade, comrade, I'm sorry, let me put you on hold. We have to take a commercial break now. And when we come back, we will continue this conversation. Please stay with us, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to Politics Tonight, everyone. And our focus tonight is on the planned nationwide protest and other matters. And I've been speaking with uh, Umar Aminu Kalgo, is a lawyer, political affairs analyst, and comrade Daniel Onja, who is also a public affairs analyst and former president, National Association of Nigerian Students. Uh, Mr. Kalgo, let me come to you. You know, just like every other uh, major stakeholder, uh, Comrade Onja is very concerned about the safety of innocent Nigerians. So for you, what is your impression about how all of this is playing out? Um, first of all, I will look at it from the legal perspective. Uh, I want to say that uh, the Comrade have shown that there is no much disagreement with the situation in the country. And I will say from the law perspective is equally the same because the right to protest, to freedom of expression, and peaceful assembly are guaranteed by our constitution. And on the other hand, the people who organize the protests are always seen is going to be a peaceful uh, protest, while the concern and apprehension of the government and the larger sector of this community in this country is that uh, of public policy, what is known in law as public policy, because public policy is the greater end of even the Constitution to safeguard public security, public safety, and a good governance. And the issue with public policy is that uh, it is something that is applied. It is not from the letters of the word, but it's the situation 
and the circumstances and facts on ground that will lead to a decision of uh, on, on public policy, even if such matters goes to the court. Uh, so for that, I would say generally, the protesters are maintaining, exercising their civil rights, while the apprehension is a genuine one, as you can see, looking at how volatile the country is. Just today, I was listening to the broadcast of BBC in the Hausa language. Our Ghana, a West African country as well, had a planned protest, and uh, the government went to court, and today it was called off. It was scheduled to hold today, and the youth there have abided by that. So uh, I like the way it uh, translates in my country, because uh, you can see we engage in discussion. It's not something that uh, the government took to court to, uh, to, to find a legal. I don't think that will right. over well in the country. But mm -hmm. by a lot, we say, uh, well, it is from both sides that you can All see, right. but there are good reasons to have apprehension. All right, Mr. Cargo, uh, you know, federal government has continued to appeal to uh, the protesters to shelve this planned protest. There was a World Press Conference to that effect today. Is this enough for these protesters to give government some time and come for dialogue, just as the federal government has asked? Uh, for me, if you look at uh, the situation, because really the hardship, I'm taking the example of Ghana, because if you look at Ghana, Ghana doesn't have insecurity as we have it down here. And equally, Ghana, I would say, uh, if you look at it, uh, we have more, the, presently our history is more mad when it comes to insecurity and even violent protest. But looking at the situation when you have hunger and this level of uh, high standard of life, so it's so volatile that uh, guaranteeing a peaceful I mean, uh, protest will be very hard. Because as Aristotle has said it, hunger and corruption are parents to all revolutions. I believe that's what the government is seeing into this and uh, raising these alarms. And equally, you can see some of the leaders of the protesters. There was a leader, Comrade Mukhtar Garba, who claimed to be like the initiators. He was on record to say that, well, from what he have observed, it's like there are some uh, hands who owe some quotas because he said that he was engaged uh, so that, that there are some people trying to sway it to uh, be of not what maybe is envisaged. So uh, I want to say, if you look at it, look at it from my own profession, the president of the MBA have issued a statement which is in line with the position of the government that this protester should uh, hold back a bit and uh, their awards have been heard and he laid from the first several letters he have written concerning this issue, intimating government of the level of hardship that is there in the country. Right. But it, the country is so polarized. On the other hand, the immediate past president of the MBE, Akbata, is now on the side of uh, uh, allowing people to have the peaceful protest. So if it is peaceful, just the apprehension is well, sorry. So let me, let me direct this question to both of you. Uh, before I go back to Comrade Onje, you know, there are some stakeholders who have said to me on this program that if only the Tinubu administration had been vocal and open to Nigerians about what they met on ground, how uh, bad the economy was when it took over power, perhaps Nigerians would have understood where we were as a nation, where we are at the moment and the impact of what the president had done in the last one year and the prospects ahead. Uh, would this have made any difference? Mr. Cargo. Well, I think a good interface with the citizens is always important. But that said, I mean, the citizens must see it, the government up and doing to alleviate the hardship. And that's by action and by widespread media coverage to see things on ground, I think is very, very essential. Because with this heat of this uh, protest, you know, everyone can see that the government have uh, a double up in what is uh, presenting to the citizens of the country. I think this should have been long coming, uh, but it's not that too late. I think if this tempo was maintained, 
I think we can get, uh, we can make a way ahead. And uh, gladly, there are a lot of, today, even in the news, the Hausa community at mile 12, they issued uh, uh, a statement that they are not going on with this issue of uh, protest. So along the line, you see in and out how people have looked at this because, well, if you look at the, the African countries, what is happening, I think uh, it calls for concern that every country should uh, do all it has if you look at the example of Kenya and what have you. So, and even the last protest uh, of NSAS, though it uh, has some, uh, it, uh, you can see it's end up being a, a, a violent protest. All right. Uh, we understand the agitations of the youth, mm. but uh, learn from the elders and history is a good lesson mm. as well. All right. Comrade Anja, let me come to you. Would that have made any difference? And second, uh, the president has asked the security agencies to protect the protesters. But, you know, in the event of obstinate protesters who may want to prove a point to security agencies, how do you think they should handle such? Because we've seen instances where protests became chaotic by a singular act of police firing tear gas at protesters. Uh, is well, that a question um, to me? That is why I was raising that was why I was raising concern over the leadership of the protesters. Now, because of the situation, the hardship in the country, a lot of people that are gearing up to go to the streets and to the barricade to protest are going there with the impression of manners falling from above to resolve their hunger uh, problem or challenges. And where they fail to get this manner at the barricade, because for them, the solution to the hunger crisis is at the barricade. What you hear everywhere is end bad governance. None of the protesters have come out to suggest a way out of the bad governance. We must understand clearly that the hardship is a global phenomenon that has trickled down nations and countries. And that is why this protest is ubiquitous, especially in the African countries. With uh, the Nigerian situation, Let's not forget that all the candidates of the major political parties, particularly the PDP, the Labour Party, and the APC, committed themselves during the campaign to the removal of fuel subsidy, which means either ways, if Peter Obi, either Peter Obi or Atiku had emerged the president, from the 2023 presidential polls, they still will have removed the first subsidy because that was the only way we we're going to save our economy that was already on uh, oxygen, gasping for breath. And that was why that step was taken. So if the protesters feel that the manner in which the first subsidy was removed was wrong, then they should come up with suggestions for possible adjustments on the policy. Otherwise, the impression being given to people that they are going to get solution at the barricade is okay. that which is going Comrade. to usher in Comrade Anja, the um, issues once again, that we're I need all to running you away from. All right, Comrade Anja, let me put you on hold for a minute while we go on another quick break. I'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I still have with me on the program Comrade Daniel Onja, is a public affairs analyst and former president, 
National Association of Nigerian Students, also Umar Aminu Kago is a lawyer and political affairs analyst. Th gentlemen, thank you so much for staying with us on the program. Comrade Roger, let me allow you to land with your, finish with your line of thought. Uh, before we went to that break, you were saying all the presidential candidates promised or uh, said they were going to remove subsidy. Yes, that's a fact. But also, some Nigerians are saying if only President Tinubu had been very vocal about how bad the situation was when he took, uh, when he assumed office, perhaps Nigerians would have understood better. Uh, Mr. President didn't need to uh, be vocal about the situation he made on ground because we are all aware of it. Most Nigerians were aware of it. And um, the only way we could rescue our economy was to remove the first subsidy. We had a situation where only few individual were, individuals were milking the nation or were benefiting at the expense of the majority of Nigerians. And that was why it became necessary to remove the fuel uh, subsidy so that the monies that will uh, be saved from there can be channeled into other areas of our life, you know, in terms of uh, advancing our... Uh Comrade, are you there? All right. Mr. Calgo, let me come to you. Uh, so what is your impression about the 15 charter of demands by, uh, made by the organizers of this protest? Uh, I mean, so let me also quote the uh, Arawa Consultative Forum. The forum says the current existential challenges that Nigerians live with are dire, made, by glaring, uh, made more glaring by the insensitive and ostentatious lifestyles and attitudes of Nigerians' elected representatives and other public officials, which has resulted in palpable despair and widespread anger for ordinary citizens. So this is otherwise uh, a reiteration of the call for us to cut the cost of governance. Where does government start from? Um, cutting the cost of government uh, uh, is a good idea, in, in, especially when the country is faced with uh, such a, uh, a position. And it's a global trend, I would say, but uh, the way it is faced down in our countries, particularly African countries, that we rely on importation of most of our goods is really there. But I want to say, as Nigerians, uh, there is no, I mean, no denial to the fact that our number one public enemy is corruption. We cannot take our eye from corruption. And when I say corruption here, whether a corruption that we deem to be official or what have you, because uh, in the way that uh, people are saying that at times, uh, the payments or what have you that are there for the legislatures of the level it is. So I'm just trying to say that um, uh, the hope for this country is for us to live as patriotic Nigerians with the good ideals. And uh, the youth also who hold the future of this country must come to terms to that so that we know that the problem of our country is partly all on us with regard to our patriotism and good ideas and morals that can build a nation. Until we get it right on that, I think these wide allegations of system of government, existential threats and what have you, won't go away. So I encourage the youths to know that uh, we have to live with the good morals of building a nation of patriotism and we see how. The government should not take his eye on the issue of corruption. Not a single man, I believe. That's because even with the current situation, all the laudable things the government is doing will not trickle down. You can see the better edu issue, and a lot of things can happen. So I'm just trying to say, let's live up to it as citizens. The trade blames will not do. I think it's about looking at the reality. So uh, this is the much I will say when it comes to the issue of uh, governance. Mm. All right, uh, Comrade Onje. So, I mean, let me also direct that question to you. Uh, what's your impression about the 15 Charter of Demands by, by the organizers of the protest? Well, um, 
the demands for me are unrealistic. Uh, you can't be asking a president who emerged through a constitutional process to uh, resign, and you can't be calling for a reversal of the first subsidy removal policy. I would rather encourage the protesters to concentrate on demanding accountability from the monies that have been saved from the uh, removal of first subsidy and to know what uh, they are being channeled into. And also, uh, we have a ray of hope. Mr. President, knowing the hardship which accompanies or attends this policy of first subsidy removal, had tried over time to provide funds for palliative. That is why I'm also of the opinion that the protest, even though it is uh, uh, rightfully conceived, but directed at the wrong person or the wrong uh, uh, arm or seat of government. Because Mr. President, having given funds to the state governors, what else is expected of him in terms of pushing in the effects of this policy? Some of the governors misdirected the funds and also embarked on a misplaced priority. And that is why the impacts of these funds were not felt. Mr. President took further step, having realized that there's absence of governance at the grassroots, at the rural areas. Mr. President pursued a suit that eventually granted financial autonomy to the 777 local governments in the country. And even now in the National Assembly, the process is on to also grant political independent independence to the local government so that you can have the local government electoral commission that will be conducting elections into uh, position and offices at the local government. For me, the protest that was worth embarking on and the cost that was worth even dying for by Nigerians ought to have been the pursuit for the local government autonomy. And Mr. President, in his own wisdom, having realized that there's absence of governance at the rural areas, at the local government, and the reason we have this heightened level of insecurity in the rural areas, he pursued this course and he was able to attain it. I think it should be a big congratulation to Nigerians, and Nigerians should also understand that Mr. President has good intention. Someone who is anti marxist wouldn't have pursued this project. Nobody will have dared the governors to pursue the cause of this local government autonomy like Mr. President have done. And I think he deserves some commendation. And also, Nigerians should be a little bit patient with him. That is where the term like for policy formulation comes in. Now the policy has been initiated. The uh, financial autonomy has been granted by virtue of the judgment of the Supreme Court. We are talking about the point of pronouncement of policy and to the implementation. The implementation process is still ongoing. By the time this is fully implemented, I think the suffering, the hardship would have been ameliorated. And aside that, Mr. President also has successfully fought the oil cabals in Nigeria. How many people will have dared there? And I'm also convinced that there are other areas that Mr. President is taking the battle to, like the areas of corruption, and some maybe for strategic reasons, I believe is allowing for now. The posturing of the members of the National Assembly, you know, also is of great concern. In this difficult situation, I think right. we, should st we should stop showing flamboyancy and extravagancy in our conduct as political leaders, because this is what uh, is actually giving the concern and some are capitalizing on to incite innocent right. citizens and the less informed people that will be on the streets even on this protest. So I would rather that we exercise a little more patience with Mr. President, especially now that he has approved the sales of crude oil to the Dangote refinery and local refinery, more so even in our own local currency. It means right, huge sums of uh, money are going to be saved.
and this is going to also here. stabilize our foreign exchange. All right. So let me go to Mr. Calgo. Uh, Comrade Donje just raised uh, some very valid points, and I'd like to take you up on that. How do you assess the complementary roles of state governors in the economic recovery of this country? Are they doing enough? And I'm asking that question because from time to time, we talk about federal government all the time, while we cut state governors some slack. I mean, Sokoto State has the highest number of poverty with 91%. Imo State reported the highest rate of unemployment with about 48.7%. A number of states recorded the lowest underemployment rate on non-gunmen all across the southeast region, yet no protest in all of these states. Why now? Um... I, I would say it would be very difficult for me to assess all the governors in Nigeria. But I have to say we have to live with the system we have. We have a federal government and we have a state government that will cater for the, I mean, citizens in, the, uh, in their states. Uh, that said, I would want to say that uh, the issue for the ordinary citizen in the country is to see on the ground how his life had become maybe either in terms of food quality uh, the quality of life health and what have you believe you me uh, these issues are real concerns especially with the level we are and uh, the main problem is uh, you see if you have a system the government are semi-autonomous in a way that the federal government can take care of it when you find some governors lacking behind. But how do you checkmate that? I believe it's for us as a nation and citizens to live up to our level of expe expectation. The ordinary citizens are not left uh, 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 and are not left out of the occasion because elections are there, are held. We have to stand our ground. Let me give you just one example of how. I mean, the self-esteem of the Nigerian citizen has degraded too. I could remember during the Buhari regime, there was a time when the petrol pump price was paid. In the majority of states, you will find it paid at maybe 80 something, and you will go in there, and the, 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 the people, I mean, selling will tell you to pay more than that. And people will just, so you see the consciousness of that, this is a common one of the country for the citizens is not there. That's why even this issue of, uh, of, 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 of uh, I mean, uh, subsidy is not well understood. I just want to disagree with my uh, the comrade there. You will see the ordinary citizen don't understand much about the issue of oil subsidy. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's debatable. It's debatable. So I think uh, the state governors too is now for the president to do all he could uh, to encourage the state governments to be up to it. But the issue of this independence to local government, I think, is a very ingenious way in achieving that. Because mm -hmm. now, local level, I think people will easily relate to the local government chairman in trying to see things are done. I think uh, if time goes, we will see government coming closer to the community. And it will be easier for uh, the community to checkmate those political leaders that are so close to the grassroots. To All right. So, so, Mr. Kalga, let me stay with you before I go back to Comrade Onje. One of the demands of the protesters is end banditry, terrorism, and violent crimes, uh, reforms of, of security agencies to stop continuous human rights violations and duplication of security agencies and enhance the physical security of Nigerian citizens. The truth is we cannot shy away from the fact that insecurity has been a biggest challenge. But Nigeria's military has announced offensives, including airstrikes against bandit hideouts in vast forests across the northwest. But the criminal gangs are proving an elusive enemy. What exactly are we not doing right? Mr. Cargo? Well, um, I, would, I, I would respond to this first by saying, yes, indeed, the security of lives, property is uh, wholeheartedly on the government. And wherever citizens found themselves not to have that, they would always take it on the government. That said, it does not mean that the ordinary citizens have their respective duties, but generally the bulk of the, duty, the, the, the responsibility is on the government. I think there are this issue of security. I'm not expert on security, but I believe 
it is something that has to be nurtured by the including the people on ground. And I want to say something on to that. Uh, there are adversities in life. We have insecurity. But even at that, I could remember when the Iraq war was waging, I listened to a, a documentary where it said that wherever there is a war, there are people that it is during that time they, that they make their monies. So I want the government to look critically at uh, all the institutions that are involved in issue of security so that the, the essence of all the funds is being geared towards achieving true peace. Uh, I think the this thing is not it, 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 there's no military single military solution to it. I believe it has to be political, religious, whatever we and this these groups that we are fighting are many. Some have ideological background. I think if something has ideology, it is even easy to engage him because you can know from where he is coming what is accommod accommodatable for the whole of the country to have peace, it could be accommodated. And, but the one, the one that is more dangerous is this uh, kidnapping that is just there for the trail of making money and what have you. I believe even those who are already in that quagmire would find it so difficult and will be opting for ways out because human beings is a civilized uh, 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 species. And uh, insecurity will not serve his purpose no matter what. So it will definitely down on them. So let's use all ways possible to all see right. that. Uh, yes. All right, comrade. So, I mean, the truth is, or the fact is, there must be an end to insecurity. But, you know, juxtaposing this with the latest uh, Global Terror Index, which shows that Nigeria has made unprecedented progress in addressing insecurity. At the same time, recently there were reports of female suicide bombers now back to Bornu State. So what more can the president do to secure the country? Well, I think one of the greatest steps he has taken is this autonomy to the local government. Because this will enable the government at the uh, rural area rural areas to provide the necessary and needed security logistics. If you go to most of the local governments now, and um, you uh, try to engage the security agents to respond to any security situation, the first thing you begin to hear is a lack of mobility, lack of logistics, and all of them. Yet, funds men for the local government are being released to the state governors. So I think with this local government autonomy now, the government have, have been taken down to the people at the grassroots. And the people will tax the leadership at the local government and demand for accountability. I believe that this local government autonomy will enable the local government authorities to provide the necessary security logistics to address the security challenges at the local government and rural areas. And beyond that, there will be improved primary health care delivery system at the local government. Beyond that, there will be creation of jobs in the informal and informal sector at the local government. This is because funds will be available to these local government uh, authorities to open up space at the rural areas, advance uh, infrastructure and development and by so doing development will have gotten to the hideouts of these criminal elements and that would displace them from the environment. All we need to do is to stir up activity by the time the citizens begin to feel they have high stake in the governance at their local government they will be the one to protect their immediate environment because the resources will be there for them to do that and beyond that also we need to commend our military and the security agencies because indeed they've done so much in the last one year of this administration to give us uh, this breather. And we are encouraging them not to relent. And that is why I'm concerned about uh, a violent protest because if we overstretch our security uh, architecture or apparatus, 
it is the bandits and terrorists are known to capitalize on the differences and division of citizens to unleash mayhem. Let's not lose sight of their right. existence right. in our country. Be mm. Because if you overwhelm let, let our security, it means we are giving way to... Let me ask you this question. We're winding down. Do you think uh, the Bola Tinubu government needs to change its tactics, especially or specifically with efforts at meeting the needs of vulnerable Nigerians? For instance, federal government sends struck of rights to states through governors or bureaucrats. If these things have been getting to vulnerable Nigerians, we may not be where we are today. What do you think? Well, uh, while the federal government is doing its best to send these relief materials as palliative to the vulnerable Nigerians, the challenge that we have is the problem of corruption. I remember December last year when uh, these provisions were made, a particular House of Red member from Edo State came out in a very viral video to showcase what had been given by the federal government. But not all of the House of Red members or senators declared what was given by the federal government. There were a lot of diversions. And I believe that was the height of callousness. Because while the citizens are complaining about the bogus salaries and allowances of the lawmakers, so, comrade, it is enough comrade, to maintain this is my that, question. you know, and comrade, give to the people what is theirs. Yeah, this is my question. So, it's still the challenge of corruption. Mm, I hear that. And corruption didn't start today. And if we sit down today and start talking about corruption, we will be here for the next one hour. So, corruption is there. But I'm asking, do you think the Bola Tinubu government needs to change its tactics, especially with efforts that meet the needs of vulnerable Nigerians? If what the government has, if the, if the tactic the government has been using before now has not worked, do you think this government should change that? I think the government should change the approach. Because most of these relief materials that are given never get to the targeted people, the vulnerable people eventually. Now that virtually everybody is registered and we all have our NIN, NIN numbers, I think the government should deploy technology and science. Let the, gov let the government create a platform where citizens that are vulnerable can apply and these uh, relief materials can be delivered to them directly or they will be aware, they are able to track what is meant for them. And if these relief materials are released, they should be able to publish names of beneficiaries for transparency so that the entire nation will know exactly where uh, uh, our, uh, our, uh, the taxpayers' money and our collective uh, either patrimony or funds is being invested in. So there should be a proper record for those who are beneficiaries of this right. government largesse or relief materials. But the current method or approach use gives room for uh, corruption. It mostly Thank doesn't you, get to them. Uh, and Mr. I want Kalgo, to also use this opportunity to, to call on the youth of the country to take advantage, particularly the student, of the student loan amidst this hardship which the federal government has provided. And also we know that Mr. President has signed uh, the new minimum Comrade, wage. Uh, let me quickly, uh, because of time, in, and yes, Comrade, because of time, I hear country. you. Because of time, let me quickly take Mr. Kalgo's uh, final word to Nigerians at this time. Mr. Kalgo, what's your final word to Nigerians, uh, young Nigerians at this time? The protest is tomorrow. My final words to Nigerian youth is that they are concerned are our concern. Well understood. And all the hardships and calls for good governance are in order and correct. And even before they embark on the protest, their message is heard. But that should not take their eyes from this apprehension. Personally, I believe these apprehensions are real. And if in the events I have seen the meeting with the IGP, this protest is going to go, it should happen in a controlled manner in a place. Because even the protest that was averted in Ghana is going to take place in a square in a place. Right. So finally, it should be good if they hear the words 
and uh, hold back this uh, protest. All right. Thank Concise. you so much, gentlemen, for your uh, perspective tonight. Concise, precise, and very thoughtful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I've been speaking with Omar Aminu. Kalgo, a lawyer and political affairs analyst, and comrade Daniel Onje, public affairs analyst and former president, uh, National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Please have a great night. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And thank you for watching, everyone. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. Get in touch with us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and X, at TVC News NG and at Olajibuke W.O. using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Olajibuke Olatuji. Good night, everyone.